because we use the balance, I'm very confident that it's a good flat gel. Okay, so that's the gel, and that should be about a 0.6 centimeter height, right? Key is, is that the, there's enough gel going up the teeth that the, that'll leave enough volume for my. Well, I have 20 microliters. I probably won't load all of them, but uh, at least 15 microliters I want to fit into this chamber that's going to be there when I take the comb out. And we're going to load this with 1x TBE buffer. A good rule of thumb is about the thickness of the gel on top of the... So if you put the camera down here, you want to have about a thickness of the gel, of the buffer on top of the gel. So now that the, the gel is submerged, it's really easy, in fact, to pull out this gel or the comb. Now I want to pull it out even, so I have, I'm using two hands, one hand on each side of the comb, and you can't tell from the gel, but I'm actually pulling very sl slowly. There we go. I want to pull straight up so I don't lift the gel off the bottom. It came up a little bit. It's important that the gel does run flat. Once we load, so this is the uh, lid that we use when the electrodes are turned on. And here's the power supply. What I can do is once this is on, or even or after it's running, I can just make sure that it's balanced, right? For me, I'm more concerned about it being off balance left to right than I am forward to reverse. If it's a little bit tilted, right, then one of the sides is a little bit closer to the electrode than the other, and that may be all the distance or the difference that you have between your bands that you're trying to resolve. It's hard to see those wells, and it helps me load the gel is to add some a background contrast to that. Now look and see. Can you see the wells now? <laughs> it's pretty obvious. So that that helps with helps with loading. But before we start loading our sample, you know, I want to get up, make sure we have our ladder handy. And uh, again, in this red tray, there is some ladder. There are different ladders. There's this one here. But this is the quanti marker, and that's what we'll be using for this semester. The uh, base pair fragments that you see are right here. There's a magnet here on the side of the, the beer cooler, and this is the ladder, how it'll appear in the gel. This is the nanograms per band here, and the size. There's a bunch of these in the drawer for the class under the 310 bench. Okay, so I have the ladder. We don't want to load 15 microliters. Go back down to five. We'll load five microliters. Once again, I use two hands for loading. So I'm pushing my hands together. He's putting the pipette in the middle. I'll put the ladder on the far left. The reason why I do the ladder, I do the ladder first. This is my standard, right? So I want to make sure that everything in my samples runs well. One way to do that is to bracket the loading, meaning that I load this first. I'll load my samples, then I'll load one more laying the ladder. If anything happened between those two time points when loading the ladder, I'll know that because the ladders will be different on either side. Now, um, in general, it shouldn't take me that long to load. I know it won't take me that long. It might take you guys the first time through. A little while to load your samples. Um, I've tried to show you some of the tricks, I'm not going down to the, well, I don't go quite down to the bottom. I'm using both hands. I'm getting 15. I'm sticking it in there. Again, I'm, uh, I'm resting my hand on the gel box. It's particularly on these side ones, it's easy to do. Now, I don't go to the second thrust of the, of the pipetter. That'll blow bubbles in there, and actually some will come out. Um, so I'm just going down to the first dot point of the Pipetter. If there are, if there is happens to be some of my sample left, then I throw it away. Another trick is that these 90, this is 96 wall plate format. This rack, right? And I've got eight across. This rack, these two racks are also eight across. So instead of the empty things going white, there's still some blue at the bottom. What I can do is either shut the lids. I know that I've done these, or so I'm on number four here, I do number four here, 
I can keep track of which sample I'm on by the tip, okay? In the gel, it's not too hard from my vantage point to see which wells have dye in them. Notice that the uh, wells, or that it starts to, to diffuse the longer I wait. And so in this, of any of the parts of this procedure, this is the part where you kind of want to hurry. The longer you wait, the more diffuse your samples get and your, consequently your bands. It actually starts diffusing in the gel the color dye does without any charge. It, it diffuses more than your sample does. Your sample doesn't go very far. But uh, sometimes I worry about how, how that color change looks between the first sample and the last sample. There's a lot of glycerol in the latter. Probably could use a little bit more dye. Okay, so now we turn this on. I want to make sure that the DNA is on the black side. With these rigs, it's quite, it's hard to mess up. Just always, every time. I've done it many times, you run the sample the wrong way and your sample will go this way and into the gel and then it's lost and you have to start over. But in this case, DNA is negative, negative electrodes up on the top. We turn on the, there's actually a, a hard off and on switch right here, zero and one. Okay, so now this comes on, it says it's at 100 volts. We'll run it at 100 volts, maybe actually we'll run it at about 90. Okay. Now it's not on yet. This I've just set it, and it's not running. The machine is on. Okay, it's an actual. So this is what it's set for, and you can see the LED here. And it's actual. It's zero. So when I hit on now, the direct current is on, and the actual voltage now is 90. Okay, so don't get fooled by thinking that it's on when this is all you've done. At the bottom is turned on the hard off and on switch here. It's right there. Okay, that's the off on switch. This is on off for the current. This is on off for the box. Okay, so you have to turn on the box first, adjust it how you want, set the voltage, and then hit on for the current. Now, one thing I always like to check, first thing I do is I look to see if there's bubbles on the negative side. If I look, I can see there's all sort. it looks like a, a a waterfall of bubbles, but it's going up from the platinum electrode. It's just creeping up this wall of the chamber. And so I know the current's running, okay, even though this says it's, it's you know, I'm just double checking. The other thing is I just wait for a second and, uh, and I can see which direction the blue is going to move, right? I, if the blue is slowly, it's biased towards one side of the well, then I go, oh, okay, it's running the right, right direction. But what we're going to do is uh, let it run for about 40 minutes and then we'll come in and check it. And it's always a good thing to stay here and just... You know, it only takes a minute or two to verify that everything's right. You don't want all this hard work that you've done to go down the drain, literally, into the buffer. Okay? Now, if you zoom in with a camera there and put it straight up, I don't know. To me, it looks like there's a little more blue on the bottom of the wells than there is at the top. And so, I think that I'm very 100% confident that it's running the right direction. All right, we're good to go to wait for 40 minutes and come back. If it had run the wrong direction for 40, and I waited 40 minutes, there would be no blue streak. There should be a blue line across midway through the gel. If I waited that long, it was running in the wrong direction, and it was running in the wrong direction. There wouldn't be anything on the gel, and this chamber, in fact, would be have a tinge of blue to it on this side. Okay, so I just put these glasses on top of my glasses. Uh, we need to turn out the lights again, and then turn on the transluminator. No one else is in here, so I'm not asking, but if someone else is in here, be sure and ask. You don't want them to iPad into the wrong place. Turn this off. Okay. Trans UV. There it goes. So, looking quickly using a scalpel, go on either side, top and bottom first, or scalpel with this razor blade, then I am picking it out with a corner, and you see that, that's the thing we want, and it is AGO in lane number four, 
Shove this right into the tube. It's still glowing. Yeah, cool, huh? Okay, let's do the next one. This isn't one of those steps where you have to be so precise that you get everything or you don't get stuff you don't want. It is important to be as careful as you can. If this were a gene that I was really, really concerned about and I wanted to do a, be very careful about what I'm cloning, what I would do is I'd separate out the bands. I'd put an empty lane in between each, between each well. But if I have an empty lane between each well, I mean, there's a slight chance that I may have got some of CES A into AGO where there might be some molecule of AGO into CES A just because the lanes were right next to each other and my cuts weren't perhaps absolutely perfect. And on top of that, the gel isn't perfect either. <clears throat> they are separated though. The easy way to, to mitigate against that is just to put an empty well in between them, then I'm not accidentally contaminating um, my desired fragment with the one that's running ne right next to it. I put that razor blade away. Now I need to do the gel. <clears throat> I already cleaned up, and not on tape, but I already put the gel tray, rinsed it off, put it up on the drying rack. So now I'm just breaking this up into strips, throwing it in there. bends quite a bit before it breaks, kind of a weird feeling, but okay. So now we have our gel in there. Um, let's grab gel again, not to leave it wet and to leave salts on here. Or pieces of gel drying on there that should be. Okay, so now we're done with the transluminator, the system. Before I'm completely done, I need to log off. Now these gel pieces are just fine in here. One thing that does happen when it's being tra when the UV is fluorescing on the ethylene bromide is that some of the DNA is damaged to some degree um, by the UV, and so it's good to do the cuts quickly, get it done with, and get get your get the fragments out and into tubes, so we don't have any mutations, if you will, um, in these in these fragments. <clears throat> now we've got the gel. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, just a tad of gel buffer. I lost some during boiling, right? A tad, I mean just, oop, I missed that. Just, you know, a few drops is all. This will keep it nice and moist. And I expect I'll lose some volume anyway the next time I boil it. So now we need to get some paraffin and cover the top so we don't have any, so the gel doesn't dry out and it'll be ready to go the next time I need to use it. I just stick it in the microwave, roll it around a few times and I'm ready to pour.